Hello, I'm Gav. I'm Dan. We're the Slow Mo Guys on a firing range on an exceptionally bright day, which is what we need for Slow Mo. Do you remember that old footage of bullets at a million frames a second? It was black and white, maybe like 12 years ago. I think it was longer than 12 years. Maybe. You're old now. I'm old. It's maybe like longer than that ago. years ago. I do remember it, and I, I remember <laughs> thinking how mind-blowing it was. I thought it was fake. Because it was like unheard of frame rates at that time. I think it was a Shimatsu black and white camera. So extremely high frame rate, but extremely short duration recording. I was started filming with you and we were doing sort of maybe a thousand frames a second. Yeah. And that's sort of the limit of what we could do at the time, right? And I was like, how are they getting 10 minutes? Why don't you have that? Why don't we have that camera? But now we have a camera that can do 1.75 million. I figured we could try and get some of that footage ourselves. I've never shot anything like that. Just really nice close up of bullets just splashing all over this. And we'll try and, we'll try and push to the limits of this camera. Push it to the limit. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, so today we've got your standard 9mm ball round, we've used these before. We've also got a hollow point, we've not used these yet. And step it up a notch, we've now got a, as the Americans would say, 30 or 6 Okay. Which is considerably beefier. Okay, so we thought it might be interesting before we see bullets bounce off metal, it might be interesting to see a bullet go through metal. Well, hopefully go through metal. Yeah. This is an aluminium baking tray, I finished making some cookies. <laughs> and. Uh, now we're going to try and see if a 9mm will punch through here. I've got a 200mm lens on the TMX7510, just so that we can fill the frame with that target without being right next to it. And Dan is going to shoot from back here. You're a pretty good shot, aren't you? I feel like a lot of people in the comments are like, bloody hell, he can nail these shots. <laughs> I guess. I don't, <laughs> you know, you will say that and I'll just miss completely. <laughs> All right, well, the first shot will start at 82,000. So you have the freedom of the entire plate being in frame. And then we'll crop down as we get faster. So it's going to become more difficult as we go on. Oh good. Loaded. Made ready. Made a really neat little hole. Pew. Wow. It's like a splash in a pond. Yes. Like you've barely noticed anything. Like you just chucked a little stone into a, a puddle. <laughs> I guess it nothing. stole a little piece of the baking tray. Oh yeah, <laughs> the piece of baking tray is like ah! <laughs> oh, <dear. laughs> it's, it's interesting that whenever you see like an exit wound like that, you just assume that all the materials just peeled out. But I never seem to think that there's like a tiny little bit missing. Yeah, there's a whole ripple going through the rest of the baking tray. But the second the bullet stops touching this bit, it's just rock steady. Oh, that's weird, isn't like, it? And it doesn't go beyond the bullet. It's not like ballistic gel where it'll go through and then send it way beyond. It literally just goes, opens with the bullet and hangs in place. Yeah, just stays there. Now let's see what half an inch of steel does. Yeah, a lot, I think. <laughs> I should think so. Made ready. Yep. Bloody bang in the middle. <laughs> Living up to the rep already. You can see the splash already. From the from the hollow point the bullet has done what it's designed to do and it's broken up and you can see the individual bits of like fragmentation that have come off it oh you can see it coming in out of focus out of focus coming into focus here wow wow just turned into a million pieces in every direction yeah i don't think anything really came back look you've still got the the center part there it's basically just the only part that has come back and even after the impact it's still rifling but the lead is still spinning in that direction. Yeah, look, that's the more dangerous part, is the center of the bullet. The copper definitely just, nothing of it, just all went to the side, and then the lead came back. This is really interesting. You know the shape of the hollow point, the shape of the front? Mm -hmm. Bonk, wow. Sparks in that pattern. Interesting, I wonder if it's the gaps between the metal, or? Yeah, I think it's the pieces that have hit first. So where it like goes in, they're not sparking yet. Oh. So the actual, the forward pieces, the six of them. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, and then you can see you get one frame of. Boop. It's like it's like a banana skin. Yeah. When this you... frame rate seems to be one, two, three, four frames until the back of the bullet hits the steel target. That's sweet. Okay. What do you think of our new frame? Oh. <laughs> okay. Well, if I frame up on the the splat which it is, we'll know whether you hit in the frame or not based on if yep. it's in line with that splat. Okay. Good. I can see it just coming into frame. Oh, you didn't give me much room, did you? No. Oh, that 
and you can see the pieces more clearly there. That's great. That's a pretty good frame rate for this, actually. Yeah, what was that? 400,000. 400,000? I mean, we're not, remember, we're not as close as the black and white camera. Yeah. Like, that. Their, theirs was so good because it was so close. Yeah. We do have a nice bit of colour going on there as well. Got, got colour. Speaking of colour, let's go black and white and see how fast we can go. Ooh. <laughs> so I think the only way for us to get closer based on this current setup is to just slightly angle the steel. Yeah, I mean, you've got two sort of danger areas with these bullets is the plane of the steel itself, because that's where all the, the copper and lots of bits of fragmentation are going is on the plane of the, the steel. Yeah. And then the central lead part, because I'm directly in front of it, seems to be just bouncing directly back off again. Yeah. So you kind of want to be at 45 degrees, sort of safe from both of those areas with the camera. Loaded. Made ready. I might have hit it through the same hole. Either that or I missed completely. <laughs> Are you bloody Robocop? <laughs> <laughs> bang, 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 bang. <laughs> oh, here we go. I can see the bullet coming in now, coming into focus. God, it's moving so slowly. Look at it. Just chilling. Dink. Wow. Great it's, shot though. Central is knob. It's just showing so much detail. That's Look. so similar to the, the old footage. I think we're like mildly achieving with a, a less scientific setup, but uh, you think that's this is very scientific? <laughs> <laughs> we're on a hinged table with a piece of metal in a quarry. Should we see how it compares to a regular? Regular 90? Bog standard 9? Sure. I wonder if there'll be much of a difference, really. I think there'll just be a difference in the, the flash at the front. You think so? So I've uh, managed to pick up some 9mm tracer rounds, which have got this little bit of sort of red tip paint on there. And it's got a little composition of tracer in the back. Might be a ring or it might be solid, I'm not sure. So uh, we'll see that when we see yeah. a bullet approaching. Oh yeah, there's a little bit of burning action. It's not that bright though. It definitely ejects whatever was on it out of the back. These rounds are doing more damage to the target. They're leaving a different impression. What, well, sort of cold at first, but you warm to it? Yeah. Should we uh, do the rifle? It's a heavier round, or heavier bullet. A lot longer, different profile, a lot faster. So I wonder if we'll get more frames of it splatting, or whether because it's, because it's longer, but also it's faster, so it might just be the same amount. Well, it's twice the speed. It's twice the length, but twice the speed. It might be four frames of splat again. It's going to be exactly the same. <laughs> Much further away now. Yeah. We've got a longer range rifle, uh, which is more powerful, so we have to move back a lot. Yeah. Camera's still over there, though. In, our, in between our dangerous angles, it's in the safe window. Not safe enough for us to stand, though. Absolutely not. Let me know when you're ready. I am ready. OK. Oh. Did you hear that? No, what was it? It went, I heard like a tion, because it was the rebound of the sound, I think. Clip. What? <laughs> what? Oh! oh. B. What? The ting, the ting you heard, was it hitting this? What? After it went through. Oh my God. I did not expect that. That is nuts. That's unreal. All right, hold on. Let me go get the camera because we're, we're wait, ants on this spray. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> what? So what I think has happened on first glance is it's just breezed through like nothing and made a hole twice the size of the actual bullet. It's like pushed it to the side and gone, move out the way. And then this other sign just happened to be behind it. Yeah, and it hit that and didn't go through. Yeah, look, this thin aluminium sign, and it's just sort of mildly dented it. Just gone like, bang, ah, and just like tinged off this thin bit of aluminium. That's weird though, the, the exit is cleaner than the entrance. Do you know, I didn't expect that. The back is neat. And it's like a soft tip round. It's that much more powerful. Flip. Oh, looking. Whoa, look at the amount of, wait, so it destroyed it pretty much. Look at the, that's the lead in the middle of the, that's why it caused a bigger. I would love to, it seems like it was just enough steel. It's, it's, it might be the perfect size of steel. You see the, the, the fact that the, the hole is bigger than the bullet. 
Yeah. It's because what happened is it deformed when it hit the steel and a load of the copper jacket came backwards. Oh, even this jacket's rifling. Does every piece of bullet continue to spin after impact? Just carried on through and made a bigger hole. I don't think any of the copper went through. No, it just all like left. That's like lead and steel. We can't really do precise speed measurements on the shot because of the angle. Yeah. Should we just put the camera at 90? Yeah, put the camera at 90. Put this far away though, wouldn't it? Uh, well, it's all coming out. It's not really coming out the side. It's going through and backwards. It's going forwards and backwards. If so, you so potentially our angles of danger on this one is only backwards. Yeah. There's not a lot of spread. Let's watch it again and make sure. Ready? Yep. Here she comes. Book central. Rapid. Oof. Wow. That's the, just like it turns, it's like a little transformation booth. And like, then it, it has like a cloud of dust that's the same shape as it coming out the other side. Yeah, that's mental. The big old chunk came back. Yeah, it's all the jacket. All the jacket just, just gets peeled the back. jacket out. Yeah, it just peels away and then the lead comes out the other side. It's like a lead sorting office. Like it just sorts the lead from the, <laughs> from the jacket. It's crazy that that's the effect it has on the target. The, the, the jacket gets peeled away, goes backwards, and the lead just carries on and makes a big exit wound, basically. It just creates a big hole. Should we try and get a shot of the exit of that? Yeah. Just maybe angle it 45 yeah. and shoot from... I'll shoot over there. Over there? Yeah. I think this angle's revealing something. Oh, yeah. Have a look. Oh, here she comes. Whoa, it like deforms it. Is that actually the steel, not the lead? Yeah, that big chunk is just spalling and the bullet is actually right next to it, the flat rear piece of the bullet. Also, still rifling. Oh, so it's just pushing it out. Yeah. It's like when you have like one of those cardboard cutout things, you know, the pop, push pop things, you go like that. It's just doing that to the steel. Like, pop. So the jacket seems to come out straight backwards and the lead- It's just fragmenting the bullet and kicking steel out. That's yeah. so interesting. I don't think the bullet is technically going through as a bullet. That's interesting. It's amazing unexpected. that we filmed this from two other angles and couldn't figure that out. Yeah. Like it's actually important to just do loads of coverage of this because there's, there's stuff to be learned from every angle. So essentially, it's still doing exactly the same thing as the 9mm, it's just hitting it with more force. Yeah. We're not testing different hardnesses, we're testing different like velocities and power deliveries. Yeah. Because if we had like an armour piercing round, then the armour piercing round would go through the steel, right? And it would still be yeah. right whole, but it's just doing the same thing as the 9mm except three, four, five times as more powerful. That's crazy. That was done by a bit of steel target. Oh yeah, so the steel, we, that sign has not been shot or hit by a bullet. Yeah. This is just the target that we found on the floor here. At the yeah, we just found grid. this on the floor. Assuming it's, it's steel of similar width. I think it's slightly thinner actually. I can test it, but I think it's slightly thinner. But based off the fact that it's got no holes in it, I assume it's actually capable of withstanding our serious round. Potentially, however, I think these targets are meant to like be hit and sort of give way to show that they've been hit. So there's like a little bit more give in them because they're supposed to be like attached to something. They go like, Ching. but we've just rock solidly clamped it down. So maybe that'll have an effect, I'm not sure. So we've basically set it on hard mode. We've set it on like- And if it survives this, it's really good. Pretty much. <laughs> it's ripped it out. <laughs> There we go. No chance of going through that. Gosh. And look at this, the sun is shining through the shock wave, giving us wow. almost like a Schlieren effect. You can see the wave in front and behind the bullet. It is pretty much the same. Every time we film this, we get completely new information. Look at the flaps of the, the steel target flapping about. Boing. It's just made like a dent. Yeah. That's not even, that's like the equivalent of the nine mil on the, the steel that I got. And this is only, this is 10 mil thick and the steel we got is 13 mil thick. So it's thicker because it's not as hard and not meant to be a target. It just yeah. blew straight through it. So we've got, I think we've got the best of both worlds footage here. We've got, yeah, it's got a, it going through and bouncing off for the same round. That's really interesting. That's so great. The same, essentially the same thing, steel. <laughs> yeah. It's just behaved so differently. That's wild. Is it just the manufacturing process? Uh, yeah, I think so. It's just the hardness rating of the steel.
That was a pinger. Oh! <gasps> oh no! Oh no! It shattered the vice. Now that's the transference of energy. I've had that thing through thick and thin. Wow! <laughs> Look, it's just sheared it. Just clean sheared that. That's nuts. Oh, you're sad. Are you upset? Yeah, a little it's bit. All right. It's all right, B. Thanks. I'll get you a new one. Cheers. <laughs> Perfect. That's fine, isn't it? That's absolutely fine. Absolute frame filler. Look at that. Oh, that was some class looking footage. It was awesome. Wasn't it, it reminded me exactly of that old black and white stuff from decade plus ago. And now I fully believe that it wasn't CGI. It was definitely real. It was real. Obviously, our stuff was shot from further away. Mm. Um, we couldn't make the bullets as big in frame just because I don't want to annihilate our lenses and camera. But yeah. I'm pretty happy with what we got, to be honest. I think it looks great. Yeah. It's interesting to see the patterns it made in the steel and the difference in the rounds is just unbelievable. Yeah, th these punched all the way through and these, I would say, barely a millimetre. Barely a mil. And this is what it looks like when you hit like a tank with a kinetic round. It just creates a splash in the metal. Yeah, just like a frozen rock solid splash. Yeah, and then there's spalling on this side of all the, all the metal that's just yeah. chucked off. That's mental, isn't it? Yeah. Well, I thoroughly enjoyed filming that much faster bullet. If you would like us to revisit any of our previous 9mm videos, let us know in the comments and we'll see if we can hurl a few of these into it. Oh, it's like <laughs> the difference between the 4K camera and the TMX. It's just a different yeah. thing. It's a different animal, isn't it? I was very surprised. Yeah, me too. Hopefully you enjoyed that video. Make sure you subscribe if you're into slow-mo. And here's another video for you to watch. See you next time. Bye-bye.